Rico. Well, you are old school, man. Slavic. I tell you what. It's like, <laughs> hey. You're not as old as me, though, so I never heard of that. It's so. always older. That's all. Awesome. Yeah. The Rico. Old is good. Retro bassin', kicking some ass and wearing rayon jackets. Thinking about Bill Dance, watching these fish prance through my Ray Ban glasses. Ain't nothing better than 40 year old lures coming off of Zepco 33. Out on the bass boat, making beer cans float, doing some trespassing. Fishing it old school, this old stuff rules. Welcome to Retro Bassin. Welcome to Retro Bassin. I've been told that I'm a bit of a bloodhound when it comes to finding local, privately owned tackle shops. And I've got to admit, I can't come to a new town without immediately deep diving, trying to find if there are any privately owned tackle shops still in business that I can explore. So today we're in Phoenix, Arizona, standing in front of Phoenix Fishing Supply which has been in business since 1987. So I was just inside talking to the owners, Gaudi and Alexis, and I am pretty pumped to be here today. This is Arizona's most complete saltwater, freshwater, and fly fishing store. And let me tell you, Bass and Buds, there is some whew, awesome stuff inside. The main crux of this channel is, as you know, to look for vintage and discontinued baits. And I think there's a bargain bin in here, and I'm going to do my best to try to find a few of those. However, another big part of the channel, at least to me, is also giving some coverage to local bait makers that may not get coverage otherwise. And there are some amazing local baits inside. Some of them you heard of, like Gary Yamamoto and Persuader baits, but there's others like 5150 and Copper State, which maybe you haven't. So stick around as we step inside and take a little tour of Phoenix Fish and Supply. All right, Bass and Buds, well, I'm inside and I just bumped into fellow YouTuber and Arizona fishing guide, Gary Sem. I'm local here. I was born in Arizona. I'm the Bass Pro for all of Arizona. So okay. uh, this store is one of my representations here. But on the YouTube, it's fishingwithgarysemp.com. Okay, so I load, we load 60, 60 fresh YouTubes on there all the time. I, I YouTube once, <laughs> once or twice a week. Ooh, and then after that, right. it, you can go to uh, Gary Simp to fish in Arizona. Okay. And I travel all the lakes in Arizona. I don't travel out of state too much anymore, but it's a blast. I meet so many people. I have a huge guide service okay. all over Arizona. And uh, they come in and fish with me, and it's, it's fun. This is a local bait here. These guys invented this worm and they used an expensive plastic. Okay. All right, now they didn't tend to go into business, they were just using it for themselves okay. when they first started. So they got a hold of me, I started using it. It was like, with, with guiding, Yeah. it's huge because when you open this, it's, a, yeah. it's full of um, garlic. I was good. I can smell the garlic from here, guys. <laughs> you, you can totally, in the oh, bag's sealed, yeah. and I can totally smell the garlic. So you know that bass love garlic, and they love salt. Yes. So the Yamamoto's are full of salt. These are full of garlic. So once these come out of the mold, they, they have a recipe of three garlic flavors, and they put it in there, and it soaks right in there. So you don't ever have to spray these baits. Plus, being an expensive bait, yeah. they float. And you, oh. you're old school, so you know when a worm stands straight up like this. You little like shaky tail worm. Yeah, yep. they bite on it much better, you know, so the, oh. the worm did take off and so... Now, where is this based up? So it's a local right Arizona here. company. Oh, yeah, right here in Phoenix. Right in Phoenix, wow, right in okay. Phoenix. Yeah, so guys, so here's the bait itself. Uh, and it's actually a nice soft worm too, which is pretty cool. It's a hand pour. All of them are hand poured and it's soft. Uh, it's very, very popular right now. So, um, well, yeah. what Believe I love or not, look at is, that orange one. <laughs> look at that old school color, guys. <laughs> that looks right up my alley. That is awesome. So, nice little four inch curly tail. Oh, yeah. Wintertime fishing right now, as you know, uh, here it's, we have 80 degree temperatures, but our water temperature dropped from 88 to 61. Okay. So, it slowed the fishing down. Oh. So, I was out with a client yesterday and we were filming and fishing, and we caught 32 bass. In, you know, it's slow, but we did catch 32. Okay. And uh, I'm kind of... It's kind of like my days, right? Yeah. So okay. I'm old school like you are, Chris. Uh, 
In the old days, we used to have, uh, certain companies used to have a skinny wire spinner. Bait Gary Yamamoto used to have one. We used to have those. So I couldn't find nobody that was building the real thin wires. So you know that by having a real thin wire, that it lays off Whoa, a lot of vibration. So look at the wire on that. Check oh. that out. <laughs> Bass and Buds. I don't know if you can appreciate that wire, but ooh. That, it's a, and we buy a tempered wire okay. also, which it means that. So what's that a, wire made of? Uh, well, it's tempered wire. It's okay. called tempered wire. It's yeah. 029, point 029. But when you buy a normal spinnerbait, guys, yeah, you're buying a 050 or 055 or 060. Oof. So 029 gives you a lot of vibration and it works a little bit better. So wait, so, is this your company? This is my company. I own this. And, wh and what are they called? Skinny wire. Skinny wire spinnerbaits. Skinny wire spinnerbaits. Now, are they exclusively here at yeah, Phoenix yeah, Fishing Tackle? They're exclusively here. All right. I so keep that in mind. I do have them in my truck. And this I is, sell by them. the way, what I love about this is, as you guys know, I love a compact little spinnerbait. I've been fishing with like the old school Oki Bug, the Don oh, Butler one, oh my some gosh. other ones like that. So I love a compact little like I fish a lot of ponds and stuff like yeah. that. And so this, ooh, son. That is money. Okay. Check this one. This is one. Now I make them in one quarter, three eighths, half ounce, five eighths, three quarter, and one ounce. Now look at this one ounce oh. and fill the wire on that one. You don't think that one vibrates? So vibrate first off, slow that rolling? head is honestly. So I've got some Oki bugs, and that head is super reminiscent. That is an old school. That's old school. Awesome like head. Know, right. Yeah, buddy. But and, that is uh, a super thin. And everything is homemade right here in Mesa, Arizona. We even make the skirts. We don't buy skirts. You make your own skirts. We make our own skirts. <laughs> so what we do is we make oh, that's uh, awesome. different designs because this is like a, you know, a sexy shad skirt with a little pink in there. And, yeah, buddy. And you just don't find skirts that have pink in there, but they like, here we go, morning dawn. Who, who would who would buy a morning dawn? What, what fish would so buy what are, that? So what are the size ranges of these guys? So what's That's a one, one ounce, and I do make quarter ounce. Okay. This is a three eighths, so... Uh, I don't sell a lot of quarter ounces, but I recommend the three eighths and above. Do I see a bubble gum? <laughs> <laughs> you guys know I'm a sucker for anything bubble gum. I don't know why, but look at that—a bubble gum spinnerbait. It's, it's, oh, it's uh, it's it's pink. They love it. <laughs> oh, so is that look a three eighths? That's a three eighths. Oh wow! So look at this guy. So what's nice about that skirt is beautiful. Just enough bubble gum in it. I love that head. It's got a really good profile. But look at it from the front. Oh man, that you can probably burn that sucker. Oh, you can burn them. Oh, there's uh, nice. They run real a little, true. By the way, a little petite blade too. Oh, and you use. So hold on a second. This is interesting. So you use the same size blade on the front and the back. Yes. Okay. But tell, we tell can, me about that. We can. Ch we can. But what's change the theory that. though? That's well, cool. Well, the theory is, the shad that are born this year, March, okay. April, May, are small right now. They're only one and a half, two inches. Match the hatch. Yeah, buddy. Okay. So the three eighths is perfect. Yeah. If you're if you're an advanced fisherman, and you can cost a bait caster three eighths and half ounce are the best. If you're just average, <laughs> <laughs> they've seen me. Oh, they, oh, they have. Okay, they've seen me. I'm average. That's so, right though. Nice man. But anyway, there's a lot of he carries a lot of homemade stuff here, and it's a great store. But he was saying he, he had some plastic baits that uh, somebody made in the treehouse. Oh my gosh! Yeah, <laughs> like, I, I can imagine. There are almost so many local baits, I don't even know where to start here. So I'm in the section now of some spinner baits that are called Willy Whackers. And I think this is a local Arizona brand as well. Wilhelm Wong's made in the USA Willy Whacker spinner bait. Don't get whacked without them. And where is this based in? Uh, Tucson, Arizona. Oh man, that's another really good looking spinner bait with a nice thin uh, wire on it. What's interesting about this is that blade configuration. It almost looks a lot like a inline spinner where there's not, I don't think, a swivel per se. It's just going right through the blade itself. I have no idea how that would perform. I'm going to have to probably pick up one of those to try it, but that is wild. Check those blades out. <laughs> oh, my goodness. This place is just going to be trouble for me. I can tell you right now. So here's another uh, Willy Whacker spinner bait. And this is interesting. So standard Willy leaf, but it's got like a little fleck of red on there. I think that's like a little plastic uh, tag. I wonder what that's supposed to do. I'm assuming, you know, imitate some sort of bleeding bait fish, but another pretty unique bait. Here's a blade that you don't see too, too often. I think this is called like the tortoise blade. But look at that. It's somewhere, it's almost like a shortened, a stubby willow leaf. 
but a pretty unique blade that some of the guys used to fish with back in the day. I didn't plan to stop here at the Pradco section because I feel like I've covered those baits pretty well, but look what I just found. A discontinued Bayou Boogie. <laughs> Man, I was so heartbroken. By the way, I think I did the video on the Pico Perch and I was telling the Bass and Buzz that you can get these things still from Hedden. Um, used to be Whopper Stopper and then someone informed me that Hedden stopped making them. So totally bummed. It's been a while by the way. So the fact that there's still one on the shelf, um, kind of surprising, but it, uh, it ain't gonna be here when you get here. Sorry guys. So we moved over to a section of local baits you might have heard of called Arizona Custom Baits. I know these guys are available on Tackle Warehouse. As you know, I don't buy a ton on the oh, internet these days. It's not the, uh, the eBay, but a pretty cool local bait, but Bass and Buds. This is probably one of the biggest selection of Arizona Custom Baits you will ever see. It's a really good looking bait, and um, what they were, Gowdy was telling me is that these are a lot of colors that are really good for Arizona waters, which I reckon probably would be pretty good for Texas waters as well. That looks like a money little drop shot bait, and I might be grabbing that for some Lake Travis drop shot, because oof, old school blue. Anything old blue or old green, I'm in. So I love that. Oh, there's another one. What color is this? Blue ice. And this little bait is called a drop shot minnow. I think I saw something pretty similar from Jensen Tackle, actually. Uh, but that is, uh, that is a honey of a little bait. I love an old school worm. And here it looks like a 4 inch, 4.5 curly tail worm. Yeah, anything with the old school chartreuse tail because why dip it when you can already have it pre-colored? <laughs> what's this one? Just a straight tail, 4.5 inch worm. Man, a lot of really nice finessey stuff and it makes sense. So I think these lakes in Arizona, there's not a ton of them. They're real deep, they're real clear and they're really pressured. So if you want to catch them, I think you got to really downsize and do some supernatural stuff, which, oh, I love. So here are more Arizona custom baits. Just, there's, I think, three or four different aisles of these. But this thing caught my eye immediately. Seven inch fat worm. Woof. Look at that. Oh, that is awesome. So I, I've seen a, a fat worm before. Usually they've got a curly tail, but look at that. That is almost like a scoundrel, but a really fat scoundrel. I bet that would catch a big old bass. I like that color. A little morning dawn. Who doesn't like a little morning dawn, by the way? That is just such a good color. And what is this? A little ABC worm. Cotton candy. These are great. <laughs> Just, not that I don't have enough soft plastics to last like, you know, four lifetimes. Okay, I found another little section of Arizona custom baits here. Oh man, I was actually throwing uh, some hollow belly paddle tail swim baits recently. This one, whew, look at this. That's a good looking color. What is the name of that color? Chartreuse orange, and it is that, but just the blend of that bait. Oh, that is gorgeous. Look at that. Oh my goodness. Almost looks similar to um, the old Yum swim bait, I think. Oh yeah, there's a nice uh, little chartreuse shad. throw enough swim baits. I guess that's because I fish with a five foot six inch medium action rod most of the time. So this would uh, <laughs> probably break about half my arsenal. So I see another little nook and cranny of some local baits. I see two different uh, companies here. The first one is this one called Copper State. Copper State Baits. Okay. So this is sort of I think the version of that Yamamoto skirt that they don't make anymore. 
So they've got some skirts, which is pretty cool. In some different colors as well. Oh, there's a nice white skirt. And then also see this, which uh, lure maker custom baits uh, made by a fisherman for a fisherman. That's what you hope for. <laughs> what is this called? The old fat stick in Phoenix, Arizona. I just love the idea that there's still old school folks making baits, most likely in the garages, in their kitchens, just like Nick Cream did back in the day. This is a good looking color here. What is this? Purple flake. Yeah, buddy. Oh, this is pretty cool too. And it's a lure maker stick assortment kit. Oh, that's actually pretty wild. <laughs> Look at that. <laughs> All right, I gotta pop this thing open. Oh man. There's some really good looking colors in here. Oof. So look at that. I don't know if you can appreciate that, but that is just a almost a motor oil with a little bit of blue in there and just, oof. A nice little salt and pepper. Hopefully you can appreciate the incredible wall of Gary Yamamoto baits behind me. Obviously a well-known national company, but happens to be based right here in Arizona. And the cool thing that Gaudi was telling me about their selection of Yamamoto's is they not only have pretty much, I think, every size and permutation you could think of, but they even have some special run baits on stuff they don't make anymore. So apparently these are discontinued. It is the mini skirt, and it's just the skirt. It usually comes with that either single or split tail grub. Well, they had a special run of these, and I guess they gotta do like 300 at a time. So they've even got some stuff here that is just not even made anymore, which is definitely almost the definition of fishing at old school. So I admit a Senko video is probably long overdue on the old Retro Bass channel and definitely have one of those in the works. But in the meantime, there's some Senkos that I've never seen before. So check this color out first off. Holy mackerel. What is this called? So here we've got a rainbow trout with a chartreuse tail. That has to be just about the wildest Senko color I've ever seen. That just looks funky. So I've never seen this before, a seven inch Yamato Senko. That thing is a hoss. Look at that, oh my goodness. I bet you could catch a big old bass on a Senko like that. And um, I don't know, maybe I should take that to Florida, huh? This could be, uh, this could be a little Donkey Land special. I don't know, a seven inch Senko. All I know is this thing probably weighs about two ounces each, so you could probably cast that a country mile. <laughs> <laughs> what Gaudi was telling me was, I think a lot of the guys will stock up for the Mexico trips here, so it makes sense they've got some bigger baits like that, but I, I don't know, I never thought of throwing a seven inch, two ounce Senko, but maybe I'll start. All right, I found another selection of pretty awesome spinner baits. So here is the Persuader selection of spinner baits. And there was one I saw on the Instagram page that kind of has my interest peaked. Something to do with a chip and an electronic sound this thing emits. So I'll see if I can find that one. Here it is. The electronic e-chip spinnerbait. It just sounds old school, even though it's meant to be like, you know, futuristic. So let me read this thing here and see what it says about the old e-chip. Uh, it says the e-chip is a tiny tube with a BB inside. When the BB strikes the ceramic crystal at the end, a tiny nerve type electronic pulse is discharged. <laughs> Predators are attracted. <laughs> what the heck? <laughs> Have you guys heard of this thing? Oh my goodness, that sounds like a, uh, I don't know, like a gimmick lure from the 80s that I would have bought 30 of. That's amazing, it's a Persuader E-chip. I also see some more traditional Persuader baits like this one. Oh, this is a beautiful one. It's a double will leaf, half ounce. 
Oh, look at those painted blades. I love that. That's a good looking spinner bait too. Huh. The Persuader rattling blade. That reminds me, I think, didn't Bass Pro have one, the Occasion Rattler? And I know that there's a loudmouth spinner bait from Mans, but I've never seen one with a willow leaf blade. And it looks like there's probably a little rattle somewhere in there. Oh, that is too cool. <laughs> How did I not know about that bait, by the way? Oh, I can't complain. So I see some buzz baits that definitely have an old school flair to them. The three blade buzz bait. That looks like something Oki Bug would have made back in the day. Look at that. Just three, I think different size. It looks like maybe two of the same in the back. Front one a little smaller. Painted blades. I bet that sucker, you can probably reel that thing in at half a mile an hour and it'll stay on top. Oh, that's a cool one. Look at that version. It's got white chartreuse and white. Oh. Look at that. It's like a tri-wing inside of a bi-wing. <laughs> it's the wildest thing ever. And a nice sort of modified clacker. It looks like it's a clacker, but it looks like that's actually just a little mini willow leaf blade there. Oh, I'm gonna hide <sighs> here. Wild. You guys know me. I cannot go to a tackle shop without finding the closeout section. Not a ton of stuff left here, uh, but I do see one. Looks like an old school-ish kind of buzz bait. Let's check this thing out. So this is the Westies Bass Spin but it looks like a buzz bait. That's an interesting looking buzz bait. It's got an old school, almost a vinyl skirt to it. A nice flat sort of planing head and pretty much a standard looking uh, Lunker Lure style blade. And uh, just says Westies on it, Bass Spin, no other information. At some point they used to sell these for $5.99. I guess the closeout is three bucks. So I'm gonna grab a few of these cause it kind of looks old timey to me. <laughs> Oh, and then here's another uh, couple packs of Westies. So this is the double bladed version. Actually, I kind of like that a lot. I think I might like that one actually even more. Uh, but it's that old school Oki Bug style spinner blade. I know that's probably not the first one, but that's the one that I know. And there's two of them there, so that's pretty cool. Westies, I've never heard of Westies. If you have Bass and Buds, drop a comment. So just when I think I'm done here, I discover something new. So we've got a section here of old school twister tail worms. <laughs> it says 10 for a dollar. Look at this. So Gowdy said he bought these in bulk many, many years ago. I love that old blue. <laughs> Ooh, it's like a little, uh, little four inch yeller. Chartreuse, oh my goodness. There's another uh, blue. I just love that old translucent blue. I almost picture Bill Dance throwing that in 1972, you know? Ooh, I actually might toss that one. Look at that. That's an old green. It's like a lime green, translucent, little segmented body with that little twister tail. And there's one more in that sort of a methylate color. <laughs> But just, just when I think I'm done, just more old school goodness to, uh, you know, check out. <laughs> so this was invented in 1991 by, by uh, Ricky Clem. Right after the and, year after he won the Classic. Yes. Because he and, won in 90. Yep. And uh, this was in a, in a, I don't know the, remember the Japanese guy's name, but anyway, it was more or less invented. Now, this bait has a certain cup on the front. And that's a, there's a pat. Is this that. similar to the sort of the Zell Roland Pop R where he shaved down that lip? Yes. Oh. But this, oh. Is, this is an original one that was shaved down. And okay. this spits instead of, you know, Oof. goes kaplunk, kaplunk, you know? So look at that. Yeah, you can see. So you that see one it is. It spits water out the front. See how it's curved? So basically, that water is going to come in here. Instead of shoot out the bottom, it shoots out the top. Right. 
Now, all right, so tell me about this. So I've heard Rick Klun say on his channel that you gotta throw this thing on like 20 pound test line. Is that, is that, what do you do? Mm, uh, you know, I throw I, it on I can't, cause I have a hard time throwing this on a bait cast. This is a pretty light, like the pop I throw it with 10 and 12. Okay. Yeah, monofilament. How do you work it? Floats. Now, can you work it really fast? Now, every state's different. All right, okay. so Rick teaches where you just pop, 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 yes. pop, pop. When I'm out at uh, my local lakes here, even in the summertime when they're hitting it, I throw it out, let the ring clear a little bit, pop up, and then let it sit. They always hit it on the sit part. So that's just part of knowing the bait. You know, All right, what, what about the philosophy they used to say where you would cast a top water and you weren't supposed to move it until that first ring disappeared? Do you exactly. ever do that? Yep, I do that. Okay. The longer you, if you have patience, the longer you let that bait sit, the more chance you are of having a bite. So the, I had, just real quick, I had two guys, 81 years old, a couple years ago, yeah. retired from Tucson. They were storytellers. They would throw it out, let it sit there, and they'd be telling me a story. And while I was sitting there for a minute, they were catching fish after fish, not even moving it. But see the feather on the back? And you yeah, feel those, those look at hooks. That. Those hooks and that, are And that little bit of uh, tinsel as well, right? Yeah, we put mylar in Ooh. some of these. And some have the mylar in there and some don't. So this one, this is almost already. similar to um, Rebel came back out with a P70. Similar size to it, but that cup is really unique though you can just totally see that it doesn't do that and it's that bloop of like the old school hula poppers it's it, where it's, you go bloop and yeah so, so why, why is the spit better than the bloop okay so if you've ever been out at push yourself on the lake in the early morning or late evening and you got the shad that came up and they're on the surface and yes. stuff and they're feeding and they're, they're just spitting water sometimes it's the same sound okay so what are we we're doing is mimicking the shad feeding and that's why that spits like that instead of goes kaplunk, kaplunk, kaplunk. That loud noise oh. from this store. Ooh, look at that one. Oh, that's pretty. <laughs> and they come in all different colors. Okay. Yeah. So you can see the. Uh, so what's, have, what is your favorite color for top waters? Okay, my favorite. Okay, here we go. Old school. Give me one of the blue ones out. The, on lakes that are clear, yeah. whether you live in Arizona, Texas, or whatever, if you have a clear lake, it seems like clear baits on the bottom work better. Huh. See how clear that is? Those things are sticky, so. Yeah, for sure. So you're looking pretty, at it. The back is That's well actually, pretty. honestly, that's more translucent than most poppers I've seen. Yes. Absolutely, okay. Dixie, can you grab me a, one with a chartreuse with a clear bottom? <laughs> anyway, it's a good company made by Lubino Lures, Brian Bolander, he's, uh, he bought this two years ago. Okay. And he lives right here in the valley. Oh, he does. So, Is that uh, why you guys have such a massive right, selection? Right. We have such a right. Exactly. So, but you can see there's a lot of baits here. Hold on. What are those top waters back there? Oh, you know what? What is that? Oh. I, I see something Lexi, that I don't even know what it is. Grab me a Suave. This is part of the Rico selection. He spotted the Suave. So oh, let's yeah. grab one of those. Let's show him that. <laughs> Sure. This is a walking bait. Yeah. You're gonna appreciate this one. Suave. Suave. Huh? That's a suave, a walking bait. Spitting, spitting walking bait. So that is interesting. So it's got a really nice little. Uh, it does have sort of a. It has the same type yeah. cup, you know, that we normally have <laughs> on our baits, but a smaller version. So yeah. when you walk that, it's spitting at the same time. And that's got an interesting shape too. It's almost. It's it's narrower at the top, it's wider at the bottom. Suave. Suave. Now, is this a new bait or has this one been around? No, it's been around for a long time. Okay. Does that have anything to do with Rico Suave, by the way? Made in Japan. Rico Suave. Be Could be. <laughs> there, was a, there was a song in the 80s called Rico Suave. There was? Yes. Oh, that was, oh, it's the worst. Oh. <laughs> I wonder if that's, that's probably why. Oh, my goodness. Yeah, Rico Suave. Well, you are old school, man. Suave. I tell you what. It's like... <laughs> Hey. You're not as old as me, though, so I never heard of that. It's always so. older. Well, Bats and Buds, I would say that about concludes my visit to Phoenix Fishing Supply, but I'm going to go inside and have lunch with Gowdy and the gang. I got to tell you, at some point, we're going to work on that retro bass and bucket list for all of the Bats and Buds to hit as they travel across the country. And when we do, Phoenix Fish and Supply is definitely gonna be on that list. This place was a ton of fun. The staff was super knowledgeable, incredibly friendly, and not even that they had a ton of vintage discontinued baits, but just that local flair 
that you just don't get online or at the big box stores. So I will drop all of the information for this place down below in the descriptions. Definitely hit it up next time you are in the Phoenix area. Well, I'll see you all next Saturday. Until then, keep the carpet side up and definitely fish it old school. Fishing it old school, this old stuff moves. Welcome to Retro Bassoon.